Welcome to the AME Food Safety Show. Today's segment is on the particular subject of food safety outbreaks. We're going to do a review of the latest outbreaks in this month of March 2015. Before we do that, let's review some of our consumables that you could buy and use for your own food safety. Number one, this is an ultraviolet device which will shed ultraviolet light on food contact surfaces and on where you're constantly touching. It's perfect for travelers. Also, remember that I am a complete advocate of testing the temperature of food served to you if you have an immunocompromised situation or if you're physically weak. Remember the temperatures for food. I reviewed those before. Carry with yourself sanitizing wipes, single-use disposable, excellent for contact surfaces that you know others have touched, potentially contaminating you. Travel with this when you can. It is a single-use disposable toilet seat cover. Purchase them. They're available. If you're concerned about touching areas, use a disinfectant spray. Cars, aircraft seats, any place where you're traveling. Hand sanitizer. Use those liberally whenever you're out in areas where the public has come in contact with that same surface. I recommend that you remember there's a five-minute residence time. In other words, that's to sit on your hands for at least five minutes. And I'll renew an offer that I've made before. This is a bumper sticker that I've produced for all of my audience. You simply have to call 559-827-8245, and I will send you one of these, no charge. I started something new this week, and it's Eat Only Safe Food Buttons. Those are also available. Simply call 559-827-8245. Let's begin with our first subject. The subject of today, and we can begin that slideshow, the latest food safety outbreaks. These are issues which you should be aware of if you eat. First one, I love macaroni and cheese. You can ask my wife. Ask my mom. I love it. Here's the challenge with the latest batch. And one thing you have to remember on recalls, every one of these recalls has a code number or a date number. Let's look at Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, recently released. Here was the challenge. I've been in a lot of food plants. Almost every food plant will have a metal detector at the end of the line. Some of those metal detectors need to be calibrated every day, and many food standard requirements are such that the food safety officer has to manually check and run a control to make sure there's no metal particles getting through that food line. And I'm thinking that this is a metal detector challenge because it was specifically notified in the announcement that it was a metal fragment. My endorsement to you, check your shelves right now to see if these codes are available. If not, look it up on the Internet. Next slide. Carmel apples. You've heard me talk about this. In Bakersfield, California, these particular types of apples were sold as a third party to second parties who then added candied substances and, and nuts. Now, here's the challenge. That facility in Bakersfield, everybody should know the name by now, Bidart Brothers, had a listeria outbreak in its environmental pr preparation areas. What does that mean? Is That means that they didn't clean properly, they didn't monitor, they didn't test. So the listeria that lived either on a food contact surface or near it contaminated the product as they sent it out. And they obviously didn't test the product when they sent it out. So out of that outbreak of listeria, 35 people have been made sick in 12 states. 34 of them had hospitalization and seven died. It's not a joke particularly if one of your family members died, and they're usually young children that eat these apples, these candied apples. And this was in their production from last fall through early this year. So the challenge is always when you eat food, keep an eye out. Next slide. Anybody like ice cream? I love it. Here's the challenge. It's made in a cold, wet environment. Very few organisms, bacterial organisms, like to live in a cold, wet environment. This particular organism, Listeria monocytogenes, in Kansas, was cross-contaminated, this ice cream, in various formats. What do you have when you have Listeria mono, when you're contaminated with it? Well, you have fever, muscle aches, diarrhea, fever, and chills. So what should you do? If you have this product in your freezer, clean it out. Why? Because it will grow in freezer environments. Not very quickly, but it will grow, 
And then you also need to clean the food surfaces wherever this ice cream has contacted. Some of these people that had listeria in Kansas, three dead, were making milkshakes in their homes, and they died. It's not a good story. Keep your eye out for that product. Next slide. Trader Joe's is a very large grocery operation. They buy from vendors that have their own requirements. And you probably can figure out just from the name what kind of vendors those are. They usually like something that's not cooked, something that was raised naturally. Well, here's the challenge. These particular walnuts had a salmonella contamination. It was indicated by an outside third-party lab, aside from Trader Joe's, aside from the government, but purchased those services from the FDA and then reported back to the FDA that this particular brand had salmonella. If you ever had salmonella, you'd know what I'm talking about. You're looking at fever, diarrhea, bloody, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. It's not fun. So you need to go through your cabinets and check on this particular line of products. Trader Joe's. Next slide. This is actually a very localized event or outbreak. And the issue with this listeria was that it was in a uncooked, ready-to-eat product. I have a lot of caution when I think about an uncooked, ready-to-eat product, listeria in turkey meat in this case. But if you did have it, you would have contamination because they were making raw dog food in the same facility. And I don't know if you remember on my last lecture, I talked to you about dog food. And a lot of it has chicken fat and has listeria and salmonella in it. So what do you have when you have this situation? If you eat a sandwich from this particular vendor, it was in Michigan, you would have fever, muscle aches, headaches, stiff neck, confusion, miscarriage, and perhaps even a stillbirth. I believe one was reported in this case. Next slide. What are my suggestions? Well, as you look yourself, you need to look on the Internet in a very periodic, systematic way for food outbreaks. I give you some suggestions there. First, type in with parentheses food outbreak. And you'll see an entire list, whichever search engine you use, your preference. Or you can type in parentheses food contamination. What does that mean? That means that you're looking for products that have been recently issued. I would suggest, if you use Google, which most do, to type in the news section. That way you'll see news that's relevant to you. And you may see some foreign, but if you eat foreign products, you're also going to see and be aware of that same issue. What is my point with this slide? You as an individual or anyone else in your home that has a debilitated, resistant system to bacterial contamination need to be on a constant watch. Next slide. What I'm talking about here, and I'm going to have a segment in the near future on allergens. But a lot of products, are, product recalls, are based on undeclared allergens. Products will be tested by the government or their contractors for concentrations of undeclared allergens, primarily peanuts. But if you need, as I've said before, look at the label, see what's in there, and see if there's anything in that product that's going to be a challenge to you or your family, primarily young people. They haven't been exposed. Many of our young people now live a guarded life. They're, they're not out exploring capturing these organisms, dealing with them, and building a resistance. So 80% of all of the food manufacturer sales are both for these types of undeclared contaminants. 110 recall events. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you've got to know your allergen to your family. It's peanuts, oil. Check the ingredients. Thank you very much. Our next segment is particularly exciting to me, bottled water. Stay tuned. <laughs>